Hello and welcome my friends, welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pen beauties. Today I have for you a special special fountain pen made in America. This is quite a popular model among collectors because you will see it has a beautiful beautiful flexible nib. First of all, it came to me in this box, which as you can see it's not the original box. Let me tell you what model I am talking about. We will talk about a Waterman Ideal number 52. So this is not its original box, but I received it in this box and I think it is important for me to show you. I'm not so sure what um, is the original purpose of this box. I know that probably we have some... Uh, writings on it, maybe all Soviet Union or maybe Bulgaria, I'm not so sure. Probably a box, a cardboard box from um, a watch or something like that. If you can uh, read this, maybe you can tell me what is written over there. But what is more important is the beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. Velvet here, so a nice uh, box to receive such a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen. Let me tell you, I was quite excited when uh, I saw the first pictures with this fountain pen, because it definitely has gold trims. And I'm referring to those two rings over here and here. The level filler is not made out of gold and also the clip is not made out of gold. But you can see some engravings here on uh, this ring so definitely we have 375 which means 9 karat gold we have fdw written over there and other hard marks and on the other one we have 375 and 9 carats so how do I know that this is a waterman number 52 usually on the old vintage watermans the number of the model is engraved at the back of the barrel. So we have, as you can see here, 52. Well, as I told you, the Waterman 52 is arguably one of the best known vintage fountain pens among collector. And um, in my opinion, I think that every collector of vintage fountain pens should have one example in their collection. This uh, Waterman 52 was in production from 1915 till the early 1930s. And uh, during its 15 years of uh, production life, it came in many variants and uh, it was almost always made from hard rubber. Of course, at the end of the production, Waterman experimented also with the new celluloid material. So, as I told you, this number stamped at the end, or technically engraved at the end of the barrel, number 52, indicates the type of the pen, 5 stood for a level filler and 2 was the size of the nib, the beautiful beautiful gold nib I will show you in a few moments. As you can see this material is a black hard rubber with a chasing pattern to it quite uh, interesting and the chasing pattern is visible on uh, the cap. The design of the fountain pen, it follows the classical uh, shape. You can see the shape with a flat uh, top and a flat back. This was uh, the classic design from the teens and the twenties. It so it was quite popular in those time. 
as I told you, it is a lever filler. If we zoom on the lever, we can see the Waterman's globe and ideal logo at the round end. The round end is quite practical because you can put your fingernail here and operate the lever filler. Because it's uh, made of black hard rubber, it is quite uh, light and uh, it is a pleasure to write with it. You won't get tired writing with it, although this particular model has uh, fitted this clip. By the way, guys, this clip was optional and um, you can uh, choose from different, different models. And I believe it was also available in solid gold. So you can see here uh, Deposé, uh, which means is registered trademark in France. And uh, quite, quite interesting. As you can see, it has a little bit of flex to it, but uh, it is quite nice and it ends in this sphere. What is uh, beautiful about this fountain pen and about the hard rubber is uh, the fact that uh, usually vintage hard rubber pens are um, oxidized brown to some degree. So you can see that this pen is uh, jet black as it would have been new. So this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. I'm not so sure that I told you what I paid for it, guys. So including the shipment cost, this fountain pen cost me 720 lays or 145.78 euros or 100 41.43 American dollars but believe me guys it is worth every single penny that I paid for it the um, cap it is screwed on and when we pull it off we can see this beautiful beautiful number two nib so 52 fitted with a number two nib on it we have Watermans registered US patent of number two and made in USA. A beautiful, beautiful, flexible nib. As I told you, this uh, nib is uh, famous by its uh, flexibility. And I will demonstrate the flexiness to it using the finger test. So I apply, you can see, some pressure on it and the little ties move. So it definitely has a little flex. And uh, of course, I will show it at the end of the video when I will do the writing sample with it. Again, the grip section has that ending and it makes a nice grip position to it. You can write very comfortable with this type of design. At the end, we have a simple ebonite feeder, which uh, does a marvelous, marvelous job. It can hold a large quantity of ink. What about this engraving on here, FDW? Well, um, FDW stands for Frank D. Waterman. This uh, gentleman was Lewis Waterman's nephew and it took over the company when the elder Waterman died in 1901. In my opinion and in opinion of other collectors, Frank D. Waterman was responsible for making Waterman into one of the big four fountain pen producers because um, Lewis started the company and grew it to be a reasonable player in the fountain pen uh, market and by the time uh, he died it left behind a company of 27 employees but uh, the younger Waterman, Frank D. Waterman built this company in uh, one of the great four international fountain pen producers and um, he built the company 
and employed more than 1,000 employees worldwide. So FDW, another interesting, interesting, deep, small detail that, that makes this fountain pen a great, great piece. Another interesting engraving on the barrel, we have Pat D. 1884, May 23, 1899, Waterman's Ideal Fountain Pen, New York, U.S. And another date, August the 4th, 1903. A beautiful, beautiful piece, guys. I will leave its dimensions on the screen. And after that, we will do a writing sample with this beautiful, beautiful piece. So, first of all, let me change the angle of the camera, guys, because I want you to see the writing sample in close-up and I have here my notepad okay let me put the notepad over here guys this is the fountain pen I have a small problem with this fountain pen but in a way I am fortunate that I bought it like this. Inside, if I, you can see here that sound. So it has definitely a calcinated ink sac. Maybe if I can turn it, yes, you can see that. Let me zoom on it for a little bit. I want to show you that, yes, we have a calcinated ink sac. And probably some residues over here. I'm not so sure if. So, definitely some residues of the original ink sac. Probably it was changed maybe in the 1950s. Remember, guys, what I have in my hand is a fountain pen that has almost 100 years or better. So, I believe that from, uh, uh, yes, around 100 years. So, clearly, we will do the writing sample, dipping the fountain pen in ink. It definitely needs a new sack, but I think uh, it would be a easy, easy restore operation, considering that this fountain pen is in a great, great shape. Okay, I have here the ink. I will use uh, interesting, interesting ink with uh, interesting color, a pink color. This is a Faber-Castell pink erasable ink, definitely an affordable ink. And um, I will use this ink in order for me to demonstrate the flexible capacity of this beautiful, beautiful Waterman number no. 2 nib. So, this is the bottle. I will give it a little shake, guys. Let me open it. I will put it right over here. Let me see if we can post this cap. Yes, definitely we can post it. And I think I will use it posted, guys. Okay. Now, I will dip it in ink. Okay, I believe that this is sufficient. Now, let me zoom again on the piece of paper for you guys to see what I am uh, writing. Let me put the cap here. And we have here a Waterman's Ideal number 52. This particular model is an interesting model made in USA, made in the United States of America. I believe it was made in the 1920s and it has some beautiful, beautiful gold trims. 9 carat or 375 
gold rings. Uh, there are two gold rings, so two gold rings. Like I told you, this fountain pen is fitted with a beautiful, beautiful gold nib, a gold nib, a 14 karat gold nib, number two nib, and judging by the way it writes, guys, definitely it is a F nib, F4 fine. So we have a fine nib. I'm sorry, guys. Probably you can't see the pink color of ink. It's like a purple color because um, it has some residues of uh, blue ink in it. I will dip it again. And now let me test that beautiful, beautiful flex. And I hope you can see, guys. So. You definitely can see that beautiful, beautiful flex. So we have a little, a little, little, little flexible nib. This is the nib which is famous. The Waterman's Ideal are famous for their flexible nibs. You can see the flex is not uh, too great. We don't have a noodle nib, but definitely, definitely a nice flexible type of nib. It reminds me certainly of the f gold nibs which were fitted on the German fountain pens in the 1950s. They had the same little flexible capabilities. It uh, seems to be like um, juicy, juicy nib, and you can see that. Let me test now if we have some line variance, so I don't apply pressure here, but here I'm starting to apply pressure and definitely guys we can see some difference. So we have also a little line, I'm sorry I need to dip it again in ink, a little line variance. Okay, so being such a juicy juicy nib it should do the signatures quite well so yes it is a good signature fountain pen now let me see oh yes the important test of reverse writing i will try to see yes reverse writing and definitely, yes, a possibility. It scratches a little bit, so it wasn't designed for reverse writing, but definitely you can reverse write with it for short periods of time. And now, let me change the angle of the camera because I want to tell you about the fox. And I will dip it again in ink. I want to tell you about the fox. So, the let me zoom on it. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. What I find amazing about this nib it's not only the flexible capabilities of it, but also it is a smooth, smooth nib. Probably one of the best nibs I've used. Um, so guys, this nib has seen 100 years of activity. I'm not so sure how often it was used, but let me tell you, it is in a wonderful, wonderful condition. What can I say, guys? If you like vintage fountain pens, I definitely recommend the Waterman's Ideal number 52. Or maybe you can get yourself a 54 with a larger nib. But definitely, definitely beautiful, beautiful pieces to have in your collection. This was my review of the Waterman's Ideal number 52. It is a great privilege to have such a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen with those two gold rings, solid gold, 9 karat gold. It is a dream come true for me. I paid the sum of money 
So 150 euros or 150 American dollars, including the shipment cost. And I think I did a great, great deal. Tell me what you think about my acquisition, guys. I want to wish you to have a nice day, my friends. Wherever you are, I thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed the review of this beautiful American piece, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I will see you again in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye, my friends, and God bless you all.